talking Florida State basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton uh, on ABC 27 in the Tallahassee, South Georgia area, and uh, up and down the Learfield Seminole Sports Radio Network. If you uh, if you have not tuned in before, we appreciate you tuning in right now. And we have questions uh, from uh, studio audience. And uh, go ahead, let's find out what uh, oh. what is this question tonight, huh? All right, I got Mr. Allen over here, Gene. Yeah. What you got, Mr. Allen? Hey, Gene. Hey, Coach. Hey. So, Coach, we've talked about the buzzer beater, great win the other night. So. Was that the play? I mean, were there other <laughs> options? What what was the play called in the huddle? And was that choice? What was you know? Did Harrison know where to throw it? And part two of that is, has Harrison made a weather forecast for the week yet, so I know what to wear? <laughs> well, Harrison really does a good job of uh, keeping us abreast of what's going on from a weather standpoint all over the country. So we, we rely on him. But the weatherman threw the ball right where it needed to be uh, on, sa- on Saturday. But no, Coach Jones drew that play up. Uh, we have a lot of things that we work on that are cons- that we're consistently executing in those timeouts, uh, those last second situations. But in, in in this particular case, we thought it was best to spread the floor. And we had about three options to to go. If you notice, we we set a screen, and uh, one player went down the side of the floor, so one went down the middle, and just to kind of create a diversion. And and, and Harrison had to make a read as to where he thought the ball should go. In Thank goodness. Second. Now, we, we really <laughs> planned it that way. We, we, what we try to do is see, we're trying to see how many more one-point games we can win with one second on the clock for the remainder of the year. As long as we win them, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Yeah, and, uh, Coach, uh, the basket will always be yeah. – thank you very much for that question, Al. The, uh, qu- the, 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 the final stat sheet will always say the game-winning basket was launched by freshman Matthew Cleveland. Uh, nothing, by the way, nothing but the bottom of that. But the, uh, the football pass by Harrison Prieto had a whole lot to do with that. That won't be in the stat sheet, Coach, but that had a lot to do with the victory. Now, you had John Butler, I believe, on one side, and he's an excellent three-point shooter. And, and Matthew Cleveland had made just five three-point shots off. You think they laid off of him just a tad, thinking Butler was going to be the man? Well, they, they were – we're kind of scrambling because yeah. we just drew the play up so they couldn't have prepared for okay, it. Okay, well, that's true. And, uh, and uh, we just made the right decision. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what that's what's going on with our team. They, everyone did exactly what they were supposed to do. No one, no one was, was indecisive on their cuts. And, uh, that's, that just shows us that's a good indication that our team's moving in the right direction. We look up on the court. And sometimes we have four first-year players on the court at the same time. They get an awful lot of playing time. They gain a lot of experience. And, and even though we have not won like we have in the past, there have been parts of every game where we've held our own. Sometimes fatigue is set in, inexperience is set in. But I like what I see happening with these youngsters. Uh, when we, and it's unfortunate, Naheem and, and obviously uh, uh, Malik and – Caleb and Anthony, uh, Anthony yeah. and, 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 and Mills, yeah. uh, those guys, Caleb Mills, um, we, we, we feel that this team has a lot of uh, growing to do, but I think that if we just stay focused and keep chopping wood, as mm-hmm. they say, I, I think this team is going to be right back where we've always been. Coach Harrison Prieto with that uh, football pass, uh, looked like Charlie Ward throwing a touchdown pass. He threw one against Kentucky back in 93, I remember, but it wasn't with one second left in the <laughs> ball game. We scored a basket, but not with one second. But uh, Harrison's father uh, was at the game, and uh, I had a chance to visit with him before the game, and he said he had been to almost every venue. He was at the Durham, uh, the, the Duke game at Cameron Indoor, and he had never been to John Paul Jones Arena. So he made the trip, uh, paid his own way, sat in the stands, and uh, – I uh, saw his son throw a pass that won the football game, uh, the basketball game. So I'm, I'm just saying that if the parents and the families of these players thoroughly enjoy watching their children play basketball. Well, the only thing I'm disappointed in, I told Harrison's father the next time he came from New Orleans, <laughs> he had to bring me some gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't bring gumbo. No. So Harrison's minutes to, yeah. on the court would be in direct proportion to how what kind of gumbo <laughs> he brings me the next time he comes to the game. I guarantee you that. Gumbo for the head coach, uh, uh, the weatherman, and the weatherman's hey, dad. More, this. more gumbo, more minutes. More gumbo, more minutes. Oh, he, by the way, career-high 14 points for Harrison <laughs> in, in that ball game. Another 1.1 for the Seminoles. We have won six this year, and uh, that leads the nation, leads the ACC. And uh, In fact, there were only two other teams in the league, Coach, 
that had won four games by one point or more, Maryland and Duke back in the past, and we are the third team to win four, let alone six one-point ball games. Uh, if you hadn't here, you'd be pulling that stuff out, wouldn't you? Don't don't you know we practice one-point victories all the time, and, and, <laughs> I, I and we believe. really like to keep it under five seconds. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> It, that's my story. I'm sticking to it, okay? All right. <laughs> I, I, I'm listening to the head coach right now. 64-63. Knowles beat Virginia by one. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Talking with head coach Leonard Hamilton on this edition of Inside Seminole Basketball at Glory Days Grill. Glad you found us on your television, ABC 27, and on the Clearfield Seminole Sports Radio Network. Uh, one point victory, six of them now. We beat Virginia by one on a buzzer beater by Ma- Matthew Cleveland. Uh, he was honored earlier this, or earlier today as ACC Freshman of the Week. And coach, uh, as we wrap up this regular season, we have two more games to go. We got the game Wednesday against Notre Dame, the game Saturday at 2 o'clock tip against North Carolina State at the Donald L. Tucker Center. And then we head to the greatest tournament of all, Coach, uh, the, the conference that put the tournament on the map. And uh, it used to be back in the days you had to win the tournament to go to the NCAA. But tell me, in this be- – by the way, uh, before we visit with Malik Osborne, who's going to be our special guest today, talk about this tournament that everybody's aiming for in Brooklyn, New York. You you followed it since you were a young man, a, a, a playing junior high school basketball. What is it about the ACC tournament? Well, there's no doubt <clears throat> that the ACC tournament is, is probably the, the number one college basketball tournament uh, uh, in in the country. Uh, they started it. They made it important. They made it famous. Uh, the fact that they when they started that tournament. Uh, in, in, in North Carolina with all the clo- schools close proximity to each mm-hmm. other, it created a, 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 a buzz. Uh, uh, you always look forward to it. Uh, just like we have football game tailgates. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are barbecuing. They, they get there early. It, it's just, um, it was in Greensboro, mm-hmm. and, and because of the four tobacco row schools being close, pro- co- close proximity to each other, and, and, and this created a, a fan base and excitement that uh, it was kind of like homecoming, mm-hmm. uh, family reunion type atmosphere that people look forward to going back to it every year. And all the newspapers in, in, the, in the Carolinas and Virginia and South Carolina, they all got excited about it and they did made an event. And then as, as we have added more teams, uh, that now the footprint of the league is so much different. It, it has been become such a spectacle we can move it to New York in a steel packed the house in, in Brooklyn. So it's just a great event, and everyone looks forward to it. Yeah, the Barclays Center. And uh, back of the day, uh, only one team could go to the NCAA tournament. Now, uh, Coach, that brings me to the rankings right now. I keep looking at the rankings every week. And uh, I say, okay, ACC, we've got to be in there somewhere. Duke has moved up, by the way. This week, Duke comes in at number four in the AP poll. They're number two in the coaches poll, Coach. But uh, there's not another ACC team in the rankings to this point of the season. What's going on? Well, I think that people have become accustomed to the fact that if Carolina and Duke not one and two in the ACC, they, they think something's going on. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you this. If Wake Forest, Notre Dame, uh, North Carolina Duke, or any of the other schools get in the NCAA tournament, at the end of the day, a, the ACC will be standing where they always is. Mm-hmm. Where, where, they, where we, we always are. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're right where we need to be at the top of the heap. Uh, but, but, we, but because people are, are so married to the traditional way it has always been, they don't sometimes give uh, the, the new programs in the league anyone else a lot, a, a, their rightful place, their rightful amount of credit. So I, let's just get to the NCAA tournament. We'll probably have about five schools <laughs> selected, yeah. and then at the end of the day, uh, some of those people who are making those predictions uh, be, be nowhere to be found. They'll be hiding, I guarantee you. Yeah, the ACC will, again, be uh, challenging for a uh, ticket to the Final Four. I'll promise you that. Uh, Duke looks really strong right now. Coach, uh, speaking about the um, the rankings, uh, can you throw them out the door? I mean, you know, can you just throw <laughs> rankings out the door? Is there something we can talk about, but it's not necessarily rocket science? Well, I think it's, in, it's fun. Okay. You know, it's good yeah. for the fans, the, the news media, the the point toward those things, and that's, that's always good to have something to talk about. But one thing good about college basketball, there's only one team going to be standing on that ladder 
<laughs> the finger up in there saying that you're number one. And so that's why, you know, you, you have this schedule, you have the tournament, and, and you get a chance to compete. And there will be someone standing there saying I'm number one, and all the talk <laughs> will be subsided because yeah. uh, someone has a, will have an opportunity to earn that, that the right to say that we're the champions. Yeah, just ask Gonzaga for last year. They were number one. Everybody thought that they're a cinch to win the national championship, and Baylor just shot them out of the gym in the first half of that ball game. Anything that happens in a basketball game. There's no doubt. That's why college basketball is so exciting. Anyone can win on any given night. Coach, uh, in our next segment, we're going to have a chance to visit with Malik Osborne. He's a, a super senior on this basketball team, our leading rebounder and one of our top scorers over the last couple of years. And uh, he suffered a, just an a, a awful injury. At, well, he hurt, hurt his ankle at North Carolina State. He's such a gamer. He continued to try to play on that thing. And uh, all of a sudden, the decision was made that he had to have surgery. He's out for the remainder of the season. He is here. And I see him. He's got, a, he's got a cast on that foot. My goodness. But he's going to be our special guest to comment about Malik Osborne and his leadership and his ability to lead this basketball team. Well, Malik not only has been a great student uh, athlete for us, he's been an ambassador for our program and for our university. Uh, he's uh, dedicated a lot of his time to a lot of the activities on campus, and he's, he's done a tremendous job for us in every way. Uh, he's a senior. He's going to have a great basketball uh, future ahead of him, and, and uh, he's just a fine young man. He's done very well in school, uh, and I'm looking forward to, to following him for the rest of his career. Malik Osborne will be our special guest at our next segment with Zero Sugar and now even more delicious is the new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever. We'll find out for yourself. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball with Coach Leonard Hamilton. Well, we've had a lively discussion now. One-point victories, uh, the standings in the ACC, looking at the rankings. Where's the ACC in the rankings? And Coach Hamilton said, hey, come tournament time, the ACC will rule as we generally do. It's a special honor for me to uh, welcome to our television show and radio show this evening, Mr. Malik Osborne, student athlete superb at Florida State University and uh, from Madison, Illinois, which tell folks where Madison, Illinois, it's close to Chicago, isn't it? It is. Yeah. This is uh, in the south suburbs of Chicago. It's about 30 minutes out, but uh, it's a nice little quiet town full of uh, great people like myself and my family. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's the place I grew up at. It's the place I love. It's the place I call home. Now, you, originally you began your career in college at uh, Rice, and then you transferred to Florida State. You had some connections with Florida State University. The fam family members played football, I believe, at Florida State, right? Yep, yep. I had an uncle that played football at Florida State. Uh, then I had uh, some family that grew up around uh, Florida State, uh, a lot of family from South Florida. And then on top of that, uh, before I came in, uh, my, my good friend, Fionn Ducat McGelly, who went to the same prep school yeah. I went to in yeah. Indiana, he was at Florida State. So, you know, he was one of the – bigger advocators for me to, to come to Florida State. And, I mean, I was pretty much sold when uh, I saw the campus and got a chance to hang out with the team. Fiondu Capangeli, now that name rings a bell, doesn't it, folks? He was our <laughs> leading rebounder and scorer. How's Fiondu doing, by the way? I played this on Fiondu. Oh, man, Fiondu's doing well. You know, he's uh, – he was in the G League, uh, now he's looking for an opportunity uh, for a team to call him up. But, I mean, he's still working, as always, has a great work ethic, uh, a guy who I really modeled the way I do things at Florida State uh, around, uh, just a workhorse, as always, but just waiting for his opportunity, like everybody else. Go Fiondu, go Fiondu, uh, Florida State basketball. We're talking with Malik Osborne. And uh, 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 Malik, uh, 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 when you transferred, the rule said you had to set out a year. And I have, mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you what, when you were setting out a year, the team doctors and everybody saying, wait till you see this Malik Osborne guy. He is a great <laughs> basketball. We had to set out and set out. I believe we played a tournament in Connecticut. You mm -hmm. were setting out that year, you yep. know, and then you became eligible. Now, nowadays, you don't have to set out a year. I, <laughs> do you feel like you were sort of robbed of a year there, you know? I, oh, man. I mean, throughout the year, uh, I really wanted to play with the team. Uh, yeah. The team, we had a really good team. That was a team with uh, Terrence Mann, Phil Colfer, uh, yeah. Fiondo Cabangeli, Chris Kamaji. I mean, you, the names go on and on, PJ Savoy. But uh, it was a really fun team, a team I really wanted to play with. Uh, but I think that the sit-out year was really good for me. I think that I learned a lot about the Florida State culture. I learned a lot about myself, how to mature, um, just the way Florida State does things, how they conduct themselves on and off the court. So I would say that as much as I really want to play because – God knows I, I really wanted to play, but uh, I felt like it was just the best thing for me. It, it helped me become a more mature player and a more mature person. 
Yeah, uh, Malik, is, is, uh, you're, you're a super senior right now, and um, after setting out that one transfer season, you can't play because of the and, – and, and while Malik is sitting here, his leg is up on a scooter that he has to ride around campus. I don't know how you do it. God bless you. If I got <laughs> but but we, we, you were able to get up on the chair, but uh, your, your season is over, basically. Now, mm-hmm. tell us about the surgery. You, you tried to go. You, you, you hurt your ankle, as I understand, mm-hmm. in the North Carolina State game, and you tried to play, tried to play, tried to play, and finally it was just too painful to go. Right. And you, you you were playing at the level you expected to play at. Yeah, uh, I mean, when I had, tor- I mean, when I got hurt uh, against NC State, uh, you know, I really thought it was just a, a small minor injury. I thought it was, yeah. I just tweaked my ankle for a little, and so you know, I decided to really uh, just c- continue to play on it. You know, especially being my last year and uh, uh, my team, uh, how much I meant to the team, a leadership role. I really wanted just to be in combat, you know, with my guys, regardless if I was uh, playing at the level as I was before or not playing at the level. I just really want to be out there and just be able to direct them and, and help them uh, get a win by all means. And then, you know, as I was playing on it, you know, we did more research on it and the doctors pretty much told me that I was going to need to have surgery. And even then when he told me I, I need to have surgery, that was going to end the season. I, I told myself, like, I, I didn't want to go out like that. And I still wanted to play the next five games. And my whole goal was just to get us to the top of the ACC before I, I shut it down. And so, we were able to beat Miami at the end, and then that's when I kind of figured that, you know, it was probably best for me to focus on recovering and rehabbing just for the sake of myself and my career, but also just trying to be that leadership figure for my team on the sidelines and just kind of put my coaching jacket on instead of my, my jersey. We we see you at home games, obviously, with that scooter and everything. You have not been able to make it to away games, but uh, uh, the team responds to your leadership at home games. And I'll tell you what, I think I think Matthew Cleveland may have made that three-point shot for you at, for, the, uh, for the Virginia game. What do you think? Huh? I mean, I, that's, what I, that's what I like to think, you know, when he hit the shot and I was at home, you know, I was pointing at the TV, and I swear he was pointing back at me. I mean, I don't know if y'all saw it. The frame was like this big. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure he, he shouted that out to me and so, you know, when I came back uh, and I saw Matt, you know, I gave him a big hug and told him that, hey, man, I, I knew who that was for. And then he just smiled and walked off. You know, statistically in basketball, everyone looks at the stats, they, uh, offensive rebounds, rebound total, uh, assist, uh, block shots, scoring obviously is a big factor on the stat page. But very seldom do you see anything talked about defense. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like with your absence and our defense just isn't quite up to what we have had in the past, mm-hmm. you were a big factor on the defensive end, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, a player like me, I, I really, you know, thrive off of energy. I really wanted to kind of pick up the intensity regardless of where it was at. And I knew as Florida State, like, we, we were very – always a talented team. You know, we never really had struggles on, on scoring the ball. So I knew I could put my energy towards the defense and really just focus on being one of those dependable, reliable, lockdown defensive uh, – players that we need whether it's guards or bigs and so you know i understand what my absence is kind of hard because a lot of we have seven footers and you know yeah. they're they're working on trying to be as versatile as guarding guards and bigs as well so i know they're they're kind of trying to adapt to that and you know i'm trying to do my best to help them adapt to that by giving them tips that i, I kind of tell myself when i'm out there guarding players just to use chop more choppy steps don't take longer strides because you know there's a lot of quick guards in this league that like to cross over a bunch so being able to look at the hips be one arm distance away and then uh be a second one off the floor and to close out because we have the length advantage you know just small little tips that kind of give them that 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 mental edge over players as opposed to just thinking that they just are at, they have the mismatch right away do you think malik osborne has a career in broadcasting what do you think huh I mean, I'm not as good as you, but I'm, I'm striving there. I'm, I'm close. Goodness. He comes up here, he sent a scooter over there, and he's giving us a lesson on basketball. <laughs> and uh, how about a round of applause for Malik Osborne and his basketball ability? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and now I want to I want to just change course just a bit now. Uh, last year you were named to the President's Task Force mm-hmm. on Racism, Diversity, and Inclusion, and uh, that's a distinct honor for you, and you have been active. And I think President mm-hmm. Thrasher, before he retired, said mm-hmm. you were one of the leaders on that task force. Mm-hmm. Tell us about what that task force is about, where you stand now, and what we're looking for in the future. Uh, so the task force is pretty much, uh, you know, when uh, the whole George Floyd thing happened, uh, mm-hmm. that incident happened, you know, racial tensions were very high. Oh, and yeah. so uh, President Thrasher thought it was a good idea to bring back the president's uh, ra- uh, anti-inclusion uh, racial uh, racial equity class uh, task force. And so, you know, I was honored enough to be selected by him. And, you know, I mean, that whole task force is just about bringing some of the great minds of Florida State around and just being able to make the environment more 
friendly for everybody. You know, uh, we know Florida State is a very diverse campus uh, with a very diverse student body, uh, as long as uh, as long as well with Tallahassee. And so we want to do everything that we can to make sure everybody feels comfortable when they're on Florida State campus, when they're touring Florida State campus, and when they're attending Florida State. So we do a lot of things as far as just going into the history of certain. Uh, monuments on Florida State campus, uh, looking at the history of certain names on certain buildings and seeing if, you know, those names uh, have, you know, the, the integrity of those names, making sure that those, the people uh, that the buildings were named after still stand for the things that Florida State stands for today. And, you know, uh, Florida State being such a, a kind of an older uh, campus, especially uh, down in the South, you know, there's certain things, there's certain names that uh, that probably don't hold the values that we hold it's true to this day. And so what we do is we, we come together, we discuss those things, and we try to take uh, try to make a plan of a uh, course of action for it, whether it is to change the name, to take the name off entirely, to if it's a statue, remove the statue, or just move the statue somewhere else where it can be observed for uh, educational purposes as opposed to, you know, as a landmark that we uh, have on our campus that makes people maybe feel uncomfortable. So we've uh, moved a couple statues, uh, replaced a couple names, and, you know, uh, I think we're still, the task force is still uh, together to this day. We have yet to kind of have a meeting, but I'm pretty sure when we do, uh, we'll continue the same work and try to make Florida State a, a more comfortable place for, for everybody to, to view and attend. Forget broadcasting. He wants to be a statesman and get into politics and run for office. I'm trying to do it all. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, has the task force, I know the task force was created by President uh, John Thrasher. Now pres President Richard McCullough mm -hmm. is the new president. Just inaugurated the uh, day before yesterday. Uh, have you had a chance to visit with the new president? McCullough? Not yet. Uh, I'm trying to get real comfortable with him like I was yeah. with President Thrasher. You know me and President Thrasher. We're, we're like oh, this. Yeah. You know, even when he comes to the games, uh, the home games, you know, I make sure I, I scoot my way over there and and give him a big hug because, you know, we we just have that type of relationship. You know, he, he gave me the ability to be uh, to communicate with him, have open dialogue with him, and just get to know him. Uh, and I did the opportunity just to get the same, do the same and just get to know, uh, get, get have him get to know me and just what I'm about and what I stand for. And it lined up, and then all of a sudden it was best friends at first sight. Yeah. So now I'm just trying to have that same relationship with uh, President McC President McCullough and just make sure that, you know, that he knows that I'm all about Florida State. I'm I'm a knoll to the day I die and that, you know, I would love to establish a relationship and continue to make Florida State a better place. A knoll to the day he dies. Malik Osborne, thank you very much for joining us. A big of course, round of thank you for Malik. having me. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you at the ball at the, at the uh, arena on Wednesday. You'll be most, on a scooter. Most definitely. I'll be It'll on a scooter, but I'll be active. You know, be easy to recognize he's going to be out there on a scooter. One leg up, one leg down. Okay, get well. Get well. <laughs> I will, I will. And, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Malik Osborne. Say, hey, Seminole fans. The Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles reminds you to stay in the game and play by the rules. Texting and driving is against the law. One text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds, and that likes uh, at 55 miles an hour, that's like driving twice the length of a basketball court with your eyes closed. To win while driving, you must focus, put it down, and focus on driving to arrive alive. Thank you, Malik. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Talking Florida State basketball on a Monday night. A little damp in the uh, Tallahassee area. A little wet weather, but uh, it's all good. A little chilly in the air. That's why I got the jacket on. You got the jacket on too, Coach. But uh, we're talking Red Hot Hoops, ACC basketball, on tonight's edition of Inside Seminole Basketball. And, Coach, uh, this is the final week of the Atlanta. By the way, there's one ACC game underway right now. North Carolina's hosting Syracuse. and It's almost halftime, and North Carolina has all of a sudden come from behind. They have a lead on the Syracuse Orange. We're keeping an eye on that ball game. You know, if Syracuse loses two ball games we win two, we move ahead of them in the ACC standings. But anyway, uh, the home stretch, the home stretch of the ACC season, coach. You got two big ball games. Both are at home. Well, that's the, the way you want to finish yeah. the season. You always like to finish your, your season at home, especially to give your seniors a send off uh, to say thank you for the job well done. Uh, we we have some great guys uh, who have, have really been loyal uh, players for Florida State, Malik being one of mm -hmm. them. Uh, I can't say enough about how they represented uh, our school, our, the Tallahassee community, themselves and, the, and, and our Seminole family. They have just been uh, tremendous guys to work with. We're going to miss them. Uh, you know, what, I guess the word is what, bittersweet? Bittersweet. You know, yep. you, 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 it seems like time just flies when, when you 
or working with youngsters. You, you, they come in as teenagers and they go out as young adults and you just hope that the experience has, has, has been such that they are better as a result of coming your way. And I think all these guys represent that, that fact. Uh, senior Day will be on Saturday. The game against North Carolina State tips off at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So the Senior Day presentation will take place about, what, 15 minutes before? About 15 minutes before the tip-off of North Carolina State Saturday? No, are you going to cry? No, I won't cry. Really? <laughs> but it, it's really, Can't it's, you see the tears? It's, so, it's really challenging, you know, when you reminiscing and yeah. you're thinking about, you know, the, the journey these guys have been on and how much we've all meant to each other. It's it's hard. I'll be, be, be fighting it. I'll be trying not to look like I'm soft out there, you know. But uh, it, it's challenging. And you, 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 you're so happy for them. And you, 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 you're glad that they're moving on, but you hate to see them go. Yeah, and, and Coach, uh, in this day of the pandemic, the COVID thing, I mean, you get the super seniors, you got seniors with another year of eligibility, and a couple of the guys have been through a senior day already, haven't they, Coach? This will be the second go-around on senior day at the Tucker Center on Saturday. I don't even worry about it anymore. <laughs> we just go with the flow. <laughs> I know. Well, we know Malik will be one of those seniors, and uh, Harrison Prieto is a 60, one of only two players to play at Florida State University for six seasons. Uh, Andrew Wilson was the other. He had two serious injuries, and he got another year of eligibility thanks to the NCAA. Coach, uh, uh, Wednesday night it's Notre Dame. Saturday it's North Carolina State. We can't jump ahead to North Carolina State. We've got to talk about Notre Dame. And this team, I, I, absolutely, I don't think anybody gave a chance to be in the number one, number two spot in the league. But they're just one loss, conference loss, away from being first place in the league. Well, the, the thing that's significant about the success that Notre Dame has had, they're, they're older, they're more mature, uh, they have transfers in, they have some graduate students in, they have guys that have been there three or four years. And I, I remember uh, Mike Bray saying a few years ago, the older his team is, the more successful they are. And he's a much more older, more mature team than some of the other teams, and they're playing very, very well. well. They shoot the lights out, you know. they. And we play a lot of teams that shoot the ball very well, but there are times when they have five guys, including their 6'10 center, that are throwing up threes, and that, that's been kind of challenging for this team this year. Percentage-wise, if my math is correct, Notre Dame takes more three-point shots than any other team in the country, uh, in the league, percentage-wise. They're about 40, 43% they take from, from beyond the line. Well, that's an awful lot yeah. you know, that they, they rely on, and they're good at it. And the fact that they're so good at it, they, 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 they're playing for the championship. They're right there yeah. uh, step by step with Duke in the ACC, which is a very good conference. Yeah, uh, Notre Dame on Wednesday and then North Carolina State. North Carolina State, I, you know, at the beginning of the season, I thought NC State was going to be right in the middle or near the top of the pack, but uh, they've struggled this year. They've had some heartbreaking losses. We beat them earlier in their place on January the 1st, but they're trying to find a way to sneak into the tournament uh, with just four conference wins. Well, there's no doubt that they are a, a very talented team. They have a lot of new players, have not been together very long. Yeah. They, They've integrated, they're to integrate some transfers and some freshmen in, in, involved. They're very talented, and uh, they've had a lot of near victories as well. Yeah. And uh, so we, we don't want to look too far no. <laughs> down the road. But uh, we, 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 we are excited about the opportunity to play another lead, leading successful team in the ACC, that being uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame on, on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, yes. and, uh, and then North Carolina State on Saturday at 2 o'clock. And uh, speaking of North Carolina State, I know that's a game ahead, Coach. You probably haven't looked at any, any video, but Alondis Williams is one of those transfer players that uh, everybody's talking about. But uh, he has the distinction of leading the ACC, and not only scoring, but an assist into the history of the league that began back in 1953. No player has ever led the league in scoring and assists of the same season. He's the real deal. Well, I think he transferred from uh, Oklahoma, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he averaged six points a game. Yeah. For in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. He's 19 and a half years. <laughs> Sometimes change is good. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about that. It's been very good for him. Yeah, Florida State taking on Notre Dame on Wednesday. Uh, we expect a great crowd on Wednesday. Come out and celebrate that big win over Virginia and uh, get us ready for Senior Day on Saturday by showing up on Wednesday night at the Tucker Center. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. Rep your school in the Level Next Rocket League Spring Showcase. That's a mouthful. The Level Next Rocket League Spring Showcase. Complete, uh, compete to take home the championship and part of the $125,000 prize pool. That's a lot of money. Like this opportunity, food is too good to be wasted. With Hellman's, you can save more and waste less. 
Registration closes March 27th. Sign up now at levelnextesports.com. That's Level X esports.com one one word keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield well, Athletics would like to thank Vistar Credit Union for their support of FSU Hoops Vistar do good bank better and welcome back to our show and our final segment here tonight uh, we get ready for two home games at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center and coach before we before we even talk any more about Notre Dame and North Carolina State one more time on tonight's show we beat Virginia by one <laughs> with a last second buzzer beater from Matthew Cleveland rookie or freshman of the week this week at the ACC I, I'm never going to forget that coach I don't know if you I don't think you'll forget that one either but uh, we, we've got to at least mention it two or three more times before the show's <laughs> over Great shot, uh, great effort by our players, great pass. And I thought our guys were so excited to run around the floor of trying to find somebody to hook. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what, that, that's even part of the celebration. I mean, Coach, we win the ball game and the, and the, and the camaraderie of this team. I mean, basketball is the, the ultimate team sport. I mean, it's got to be because exciting things like one-point wins don't happen every day of the week in any other sport. I think it's just so interesting, though, when you have players from different walks of life, different places, different countries, they come together as a team, and they cheer for one another. When something happened like that, they're all so happy for each other. That's just a tremendous um, way to develop relationships that last forever. Matthew Cleveland said it was either going to be too long or it was going to go in. He was confident <laughs> one of the two, right? That's what he told the media after the uh, game was over. Well, there's no doubt that that was a great shot for us, and I'm sure – he, he'll remember that shot for the rest of his life, along with a few other people, <laughs> namely me. <laughs> Absolutely, and all of us here tonight at Glory Days Grill will not forget the shot Matthew Cleveland made to beat a very good Virginia team on their home court on their senior day. Coach, it's amazing how quickly the schedule comes. I mean, we, we started playing in December, late November, our first ACC game, and we started the new year on January the 1st with a win over North Carolina. See, here we are at the tail end. This is obviously that's the end of the season, Coach, the end of the regular season. How, how does time go so fast? Well, I'm excited about it. You know, we have some opportunity to, to continue to keep playing. Uh, we've kind of – we've had some uh, – obviously – uh, misfortunes happened for us this year, so we're going to try to be stronger at the end. Coach, good luck against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish on Wednesday. Th thank you, and uh, go Knowles. Go Knowles. Head coach Leonard Hamilton his comments as we get ready for Notre Dame and North Carolina State this week. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. For Chris Culp, our producer, Dave Pulaski in our studio, Gene Deckerhoff saying good night and go Knowles. <laughs>